Hello and welcome to this video tutorial around the Scolia Home Auto Scoring System for your dartboards. Uh, this one is going to be based on games available. Now I've covered three of the current four games and this is the final one in that particular series. Uh, as we speak it is the 3rd of May 2021 and there are currently four games available. Uh, there are more planning to be added but this is the fourth and final one uh, for now. Uh, I will co cover another video based around the sort of statistics and history just so you can see the final part of the portal and hopefully that's given you everything to see that is available in the portal uh, as of today. Now um, I did mention there's a couple of features that have had been added since uh, I first started recording one of them is to save presets of your favorite configurations so you can easily load those up as and when you want to use them. Really good feature because this means that if you've got preferred games with family and friends, you can save those off. You don't have to keep on adding them each time, including the people's names. And then when it comes to playing that, you just simply load up that preset configuration and away you go. So it can get you playing a lot quicker. The other new feature there is um, it does promote the join us on Facebook and you can see there's a link there to the Scolia Darts community. Um, fortunately I'm not on Facebook so I won't be able to join that but uh, if you are as I say a Facebook user then you'll be able to simply click on there and away you go. There's a couple of little icons down here as well for Scolia Tech so they've got their Instagram accounts, they've got some YouTube stuff and they've also got Facebook. Uh, finally, there is also a web shop, so you can go into the store there also. Got any ideas? Drop us a line. Great little feature, clicking on there, would pop up send the feedback window, and you can put in some feedback about the, um, about Scolia, or about the system, whatever you fancy. You can report any kind of bugs within the system. So they can obviously put that in their uh, development cycle when they're maintaining the system to, to resolve. And then you've got the feature requests, which is the nice bit for enhancing the, the portal. So I've put some enhancements in here as well, where I think it could add value to the system. And hopefully we'll see those added in a future release of the Scolia portal. One of those features that I've asked for is around the game. That we're going to look at today so if i click on local game you can see the four game types that are currently available and there are videos uh, explaining a little bit about each of those in in uh, my darts playlists on my uh, museum reviews channel so please have a look at those and see what you think uh, put some comments uh, subscribe and all of that juicy stuff uh, but cricket, so cricket in Scolia is based on, I suppose, what we would call American or the US version of cricket. So when you go out and you buy dartboards and you've got the scoreboards on some of these cabinets, uh, you'll see that they'll have some things like 20, 19, 18, maybe down to 15 and ball on there. And that's based around this particular game of cricket. It's a really fun and enjoyable game. Uh, I mentioned I'll put in a feature request, but that is based on the UK version of cricket. So there was an old game of cricket years ago where you had to score, I think it was anything above 20 or 40, uh, and that would be your number of runs you would make. Um, and then the other person who was going to be the bowler, they would be aiming at the 25 or the bullseye. And if you had 10 men, uh, if they hit the bullseye, that would take away two of your men and bring you down to eight. If they hit the 25, they would lose one man and take you down to, to nine. So the, the object of the game was to have one person to bowl, aiming at the 25 and the 50, uh, reducing you by one or two each time until you were down to no men. And then the person who was batting would have to score above 40, but as I say, you can do it above 20, and any score above 40 would be the number of runs that you would get during that particular round. So if you had scored, I don't know, um, a treble 20, a 5, and a 1, 
uh, that would score you 66. So minus to 40 would leave 26. So you would make 26 runs on that particular one. And the game would be a case of each person would have an innings each, or two, however you want to define it. And whoever scored the most runs at the end would be the winner. This game is different. So cricket here, you've got a couple of configuration options here. You've got the standard game and you've got the cutthroat game. Uh, I do like the cutthroat game. Um, it does add a different flavour to a game of cricket. And uh, we will show you that in a moment. And then adding players, again, you select what players you want. You can have a user um, and you can have the guests. So there isn't no but available in this particular game. Uh, if I just jump on Bob's 27 and add a new player, again, you can have the but in there. You can have the but in around the clock and you can have a but in X01. But when it comes to cricket, this is only based on actual players. So I suppose a nice little feature would be to add the but to play against as well. Uh, but at the moment, you would just simply play against another person. It usually works out quite well with two players, but you can have up to four players again in cricket. And again, usually when you want to have more players playing cricket, uh, cutthroat usually works better in that scenario um, when you have, as I say, three, four players. But typically a game played amongst two people. And we'll look at the standard game of cricket. So if I click on start game, you can see here we have got the scoreboard for your two players. And it's a case of locking in a number in order to score points on that number. So if we take, for example, the 20, uh, you are aiming at the 20. And if you hit the single segment, you would knock off, uh, you would mark it off by one. If you hit it twice, you would mark it two, which will give you an X. And if you marked it a third time, you would then get the circle around X, which would then lock in that number for your game. When you've locked in that number, each time you throw at that number, so as I say, the first three throws at that number locks you in. And if you score, as I say, if you score it as a, a single, you score it once. If you score it as a double, you score it twice. If you hit a treble, you hit it three times. So if I hit treble 20 uh, at the first time of throwing, I've locked in that number because I've hit it three times. If I hit the single 23 times, again, I've locked in the number, but it took me three throws to do that. But if I've, let's say, if I've hit a treble 20, the first throw, and then I've hit a single 20, that's going to score me 20. And then if I hit a double 20, that will give me another 40. So I could potentially have scored 60 points on that first throw. Uh, if I got 180, so hit the triple 23 times. Then obviously the first three uh, points goes to locking in that number. So I would score 120 based on my next two throws. So while I'm scoring away at that number, it is then the objective of the other player to try and close out that number so I've locked in that number. That person then needs to close that number and prevent me from scoring. And to prevent me from scoring, they also have to hit that number three times. So a single 20 would denote hitting it once, a double 20 would denote hitting it twice, and a treble 20 would denote hitting it three times. So once they hit that number, that number is no longer in play. So each time people throw, you take it in turns, and once you lock in a number, that number is only for you to score on. The other person hasn't got the ability to score on that number, and that's why it locks it out. And that means you have to hit it to stop the person from scoring. And the objective is, with all of these seven numbers, so your 15, 16, 17 through to 20, and then the 25 and the ball, so the 25 is one, obviously the bullseye is two. Uh, once you've got all of those in play, uh, they're all scorable. And then once they're all been minus out, that is the end of the game. So let's say, for example, I have hit the 25, 20, 19 and 18. And I'm scoring helpfully on those. And player two has got 15, 16 and 17. If I cancel out all of his numbers, but he's scored more than me, the game would carry on 
until I've got more points than him and then I'd win. Or if my number score is below him and he knocks out my numbers, then it's game over. So it's really whoever scores the highest. In the game of cutthroat, it works differently because when you lock in that number, it's then putting the points on your player's score and then it's uh, and then that's how the scoring works and you're trying to get a lower score than your opponent. Let's have a quick look at the standard scoring. So I'm going to throw a few arrows at the board. So you will see from the first throw, I've hit the double 20 and that's marked it with an X. I'll aim for the 18, single 18, and you'll see a line. Terrible second throw, and straight into the one, but the third throw hits single 18. So you will see from, from, the, uh, from the board, there's my line to say I've hit 18 once, and there's my cross to say I've hit 20 twice. So a few more throws at the board, and you will see that with this particular throw, I've hit treble 17 twice, so straight away it has locked that number in, and you can see I've got the circle around there. Usually when you're playing in, in the pubs, uh, especially in America, if you'd hit the treble 17 straight away, they don't always put the cross in, they just do a circle uh, as opposed to the lines in between. And that's usually a bit of bragging rights to show that you've been able to hit the treble 17 in one shot just to make that live. Um, doesn't really matter, you can still put the cross in, but as I say, I have seen variations where people will just circle the number. So based on the scoring at the moment, we can see that when player two is going to start throwing again, if they aim at the 17 or the 20, they are going to start scoring points based on that number. We can see also down here, we've got the ability to change the score, so if the calibra uh, calibration has just gone off a little bit. You can click on the number and then you can change the score to be whichever the correct score was. So as I say, it does happen uh, occasionally, but it's been very, very rare from my point of view. It's been a really good experience in terms of the scoring. So we can see single, double, treble, and then obviously all of the numbers associated with that. But no need to correct because it's been accurate. Uh, we can also see there, there are some metrics as well. So we can see uh, eight marks versus four marks. And that's really the number of times I've hit. So we can see there's three there, three there, one there and one there. So that's eight marks in total, even though this one here was uh, one shot. Uh, so it doesn't go one shot there. I think there's a double there and a single. So that was like, we've managed to do this in one, two, three four, five, and then the marks around is obviously working how many times we've thrown it and how many times we've had some success for each throw. Um, and then points per round will start uh, happening each time you start hitting the numbers. So let's uh, throw some more darts and see what happens. Okay, so I've took my remaining two throws at the board. And you can see I've hit the single 17 both times. So as I got the trouble the first time, it's locked that number in for me. The second dart scored me 17 points. The third dart scored me 17 points. So that's why I've got a score of 34 here at the top at the moment. And it's also given me some points per round. So points per round is each of time you have your three throws at the board. So I've obviously gone up the board, uh, through at the board three times, well nine times in total, but obviously three rounds there. And what it's done is it's calculated the 34 points and it's divided by the three rounds. So even though I didn't score any points on round one and two, they still get accounted for. And that's why it's given me 11.33. Uh, it's also noticed that I have hit the board 10 times so I've had 10 successful marks on the board so again it's gone 10 marks divided by the three throws or the three rounds I've had giving me a 3.33 marks per round a couple of more throws at the board 
and you'll see player two has gone up to 54, uh, managed to hit the 20 as well, and uh, and the 16. So put that as a mark there. So it's changed how many marks, marks per round, and my points per round has uh, has changed slightly. And then player one has through at the 20. So you can see there it's hit the 20. You can see it's a slightly different colour because. The grey ones are showing that the number is still in play, meaning that nobody owns or holds that number. However, we can see over here with the green um, that 20 is owned by player 2, but player 1 has hit it twice, and that's why it's in the yellow. So he just needs to get that one more time before it locks out. So it's obviously in player 2's in best interest perhaps to try and get a bit more points on there or does he just go to close out more numbers and that's the thing that's the beauty of cricket there's no particular strategy um, which works best some it might work better for uh, a different player um, to, to, to yourself you'll see that player one has just thrown at the board and has hit the single 17 three times so this is why uh, it has now circled it with a cross on there and it's put it as black on this side, but also on this side, who uh, player two obviously owned this one originally. But now this number has been cancelled out, so he's no longer in play. And you carry on going through this until all of the numbers have been, as I said, out of play. And, uh, and then whoever's got the highest points will win the game. So if I leave this game now, and we abort it, we can have a quick look at what happens on the game statistics. So similar to the X01, you do get your coordinates map data here as well, which is uh, which is all good, which is all cool. It doesn't do anything by clicking on these numbers though, unfortunately. Uh, it would be great if you had some stats there, but uh, it is what it is. Um, what it does support, though, is instead of looking at the coordinates, you can look at a heat map. So you can see, obviously, where there's been a bit of noise. So we can see here, in particular, player one has been hitting quite hard around this treble 19 mark. Um, not many throws, obviously, but we can see a couple there. That's why the heat is there. And then the same here for player two. We can see a little bit of noise here around the 17. Score history, so it just shows here uh, each player and when they're scoring. So we can see from player one, they haven't scored anything with their five throws. Uh, but with the uh, the four throws for player two, we can see the first two didn't do anything, but then they start to score from, um, from the third round. And we can see there, there's the two 17s that got hit. And then there's the uh, the 20. I mean, that started to go up and would continue in that trend, hopefully. Or as expectedly, it would go down. Uh, and then the number of marks, again, it's looking at it from, from a mark point of view to see how many times you've hit. And you can see here that um, the marks go with the, um, the number of throws and how many times you've hit your, your mark. And we can see there 12 scored for player two and uh, nine for player three, uh, sorry, player one, but has had more throws at the board. So better stats showing for player two. And then finally, uh, you've got some, some uh, metrics there that show you about uh, the cricket stats. So how many throws I've had, how many points have accumulated, how many points per round, how many marks, so how many times you've hit something successfully, how many marks per round that's based on, and then the most marks at a sector. And we can see here player two is at five, and if we jump back into the coordinates, um, that is based on hitting the 17. And it looks like the treble 17 has been a three, and these two make it as a five. Um, Whereas most marks on player three, um, sorry, player, player one is again, it's three. Uh, and that's just those single three there. Uh, I would guess that if I'd had treble 17 three times there, 
that would probably bump that up to, to nine most marks as a sector. Um, okay, and then open sectors, open sectors. We can see that from the game, I had two numbers in play and um, player one, it's just one number in play. Although I would, I don't recall player one, and I'd have to re rewind having a, um, a number in play. Uh, we can see there was two scored there, there was two scored there, there was two scored there, and there was three here. So I believe open sectors is also closed sectors as well. I'm not too sure what that kind of gives you, but it's a statistic. Right, I've just kicked up a three-player game on standard cricket just to see how the scoring works there. And you'll see what happens with the numbers is the number will be live for two of the three players. So player one and player three have both successfully scored um, on 17, so they've hit three times or more and, uh, and scoring points. That means it's then up to player two to lock that number out, but until such a time, both of these players will be able to score points on 17. We'll see player two has got 20 live, so we'll be able to score on 20. Uh, player three is just one away from locking in that, which would mean that both of those players will be able to score successfully, and then it would be up to player one to cancel that out. So that's the difference when you play uh, multiplayer, uh, so three or more players. So if you've got three players playing, to, uh, the number is live for two of the three. And I'm guessing if you've got four players playing, then it'd be live for three of the four. And then that person who, um, who hits it last is the one that has to lock out the number and the three uh, or the two other players will uh, will be scoring until such a time. And then again, lock it out, leaving game, aborting that game. You will see pretty much the same sort of stuff. It shows you some of the marks and the um, most marks at a sector. And you'll see there that um, hitting that 17 a few times has obviously scored uh, a few points there. Uh, hence the, the 12 marks. So you can see there's 9 there, 10, 11, 12. Right, I'm going to finally kick off the cutthroat just so you can see how that works. So selecting a new game, we're going to change that to cutthroat. Uh, we'll do it as a two-player game so you can see how that works first of all. And I'm going to throw a few darts at the board just so you can see how the scoring starts to happen rather than just go through uh, the video and spend lots of your uh, precious minutes watching me throw at the board. Okay, so switching to a game of cutthroat means that you still have to lock in the number, but instead the scoring goes onto your opponents. And this is why sometimes it works better in the um, for when you're playing three or four players as well in cricket as opposed to standard. So you'll see here player two has hit double 20 twice so that's obviously marks four four marks the first three was just to lock in the number and then the fourth one uh, the 20 points doesn't go to player two but indeed goes to player one so you can see player one's got 20 based on players two and that's why it's cutthroat so what player two would probably do now is you just hammer that 20 just to keep on scoring that really high for player one so it would be in player one's best interest to try and get that closed out. So a few more throws at the board and you will see that um, player two who owned the 20 there had got player one up to 60. Player one has finally been able to close that out. Um, so that is no longer active and has managed to uh, hit the single 18 a couple of times just to add on to player two's value uh, so you can see there 54 so as i said the old objective is to have a lower amount of points as opposed to a higher amount of points uh, in cutthroat 
Now I'm just going to jump out of this game as well. And I'm going to show you how it looks like when you play cutthroat with three players. And here you'll start to understand why it seems to work a little bit better as a three player game or four player game. So when you're playing cricket, I would probably recommend if you've got more than two players to go for cutthroat. Uh, otherwise two players standard is, is adequate. You can play both but uh, and as you've seen you've, the configuration allows you that but uh, here's the reason right now. So this three player game of cricket cutthroat means that we've got three players all taking in turns at the board. We will see in this current game player two has successfully hit the 23 times to lock that number in. And then the fourth time it's throw, uh, they've thrown at the board, they've hit a single 20. And rather than, as I say, with the stand game where the 20 points would go to player two, what this has done is it's added 20 points onto both player one and player three. And that is one of the reasons why this works better, because as you say now, each time they score, it's going to be adding it onto both of those players. But taking this game a little bit further, we now see that as well as player two scoring 20, uh, which took both of those players up to 80, um, player one has also scored in the 23 times. So by player one doing that, they're also in play on the 20. Uh, player two then had a throw, and you can see here player two has thrown straight away at the 20. That no longer adds on to player one's score, but it still carries on with player three. So we can see that the 20 has been added on to player three. So the game has gone back round to player one. So after player two had finished and hit the single 20, it put player uh, three onto 120. But now player one is on, uh, on the board. They've thrown us 20. And that also has added to player 320. So what is actually happening is when you lock in a number, the first two players will lock in that number. And the third person will not score anything on that number, but obviously have to close it out to stop the other two from uh, further adding damage. So that's what Cutthroat does. So you lock in the number, but instead of the points being added to your score it's added to your opponent's score so as mentioned in this player one and player three have had a bit of a beating on the 20 and player one quickly got in on the 20 so stop player two from scoring against him but player two could still carry on scoring against player three and in turn player one could also score uh, against player three so Hopefully that gives you a bit of an understanding why I feel Cutthroat is a better game for three or more players as opposed to playing standard. It does give you, as I said, um, a, better, a better gaming experience and the fact is that people can gang up on those numbers and you, know, you are getting penalised for each number um, that a person is successful with. So unlike the uh, standard cricket, that wouldn't be the case. And then finally, leaving that game, aborting the game, you get the same statistics. But of course, it's just showing you for uh, three people as opposed to, to, uh, to two. I hope that gives you a good understanding of cricket in the Scodia home. Hopefully, as mentioned, there'll be more games popping along here, which I can review and do a tutorial to. But... Um, that's what you've got for now plenty of stuff there plenty to keep you busy and it would be great to start seeing in these online games the ability to start you know choosing choosing a uh, a, a game uh, other than just the uh, the 301 or or the uh, 501 um, or the ones i should say right uh thank you for watching uh, my final video in the console series, we will be looking at the um, the statistics and the history just to give you a bit of a look uh, 
of what that feels like and what that's all about. So thank you for watching again and see you on the next video.